All right, so. Hey everyone, welcome to Why Are You Still Here? The show where we talk about whatever we want, whatever we feel like, and we're not going to take any any sass on it. Oh God. Hey everyone, and welcome to Why Are You Still Here? The show where we talk about whatever we want. And uh, today, I am talking about my first thoughts on the black phone. Now, Lucas is not here for this one, unfortunately. It was just, it's one of those things. It was a bit of scheduling issue, as well as um, his excitement level wasn't quite where mine was for this movie. So, you know, he'll see it eventually, I'm sure. We'll get to hear his thoughts uh, when it comes out on Blu-ray or whatever. Uh, But until then, we're just stuck with my thoughts. (laughs) Unfortunately, I'm sorry to tell you, but it's true. What? Uh, The movie stars Mason Thames, Madeline McGraw, Ethan Hawke, and uh, it is directed by Scott Derrickson. It's also, uh, I believe, yeah, the screenplay is written by Scott Derrickson as well as C. Robert Cargill. And this was a movie I just saw yesterday, and it was great. It really was. Um, I remember the first trailer I saw for it. And honestly, I was hooked as soon as Ethan Hawke dropped his groceries and proclaimed that he was a magician. I was like, I don't know what else is going to come after this, but I'm sold already. So if you have seen the trailers, you know at least enough that there's a kid named Finney who is abducted by this guy. I I can't remember if they, they reveal his name, but it's the grabber. I guess that's not a really big you know, deal. The papers call him the grabber. I wish one called And shoves him down into his basement, obviously with bad intentions in the future. You know, he's, he's probably going to kill him. And there is a phone on the wall, a black phone, if you will, which starts to ring. But it's like, this is crazy. This phone is not even hooked up to a phone line. What's going on here, right? And it turns out it's the voices of every other kid who has been murdered by the grabber. Um, And they sort of walk him through little things, helping him out um, of the situation. You know, one kid tries to tell him to do this and another kid, you know, gets him to do that. And, you know, says like, hey, this didn't work for me, but it might work for you. And, you know, here's the, the code to the lock on the door and, this is how you get, you know, this to happen and, you know, so on and so forth. So um, they want to see him succeed where they couldn't necessarily, especially with all their knowledge together. And, um, and yeah, so it, it's pretty, it's a pretty uh, interesting concept. Uh, it came from Joe Hill, the son of Stephen King. And I have not read the short story, but I think I might might give it a go after after actually seeing this movie because uh, I, I was I was uh, I was really really into it. I mean, it is an awesome movie. Um, so obviously, I enjoyed it. You can tell I enjoyed it. Um, I've already said that. Uh, that's how much I enjoyed it. But uh, you know, I'm gonna start getting into spoilers now just because. I mean, it's it's hard, really hard not to. And I feel like this is one of those movies, kind of like Elvis, it's interesting that they release on the same day, where you're either going to see it or you're not going to see it. Um, even if you're like, uh, you know, a little bit interested, and you're not sure, maybe you're watching this video just to, you know, try to figure out if you're going to go see it or not. You're probably going to see it. I mean, let's be honest, right? You're going to see it. Um, so I'm going to have to ask you to turn away. Look away, child. Look away! <laughs> um, if uh, you have yet to see the movie and uh, continue watching if you have seen the movie, unless you're fine with spoilers, but I really, really, really have to encourage you not to watch this video. 
uh, if you haven't seen the movie. I don't want you to be spoiled, and I don't want you to make that decision for yourself either. I'm sorry, but obviously it's out of my control, but I've talked enough about it. So let's get into it, shall we? The first thing that I want to get into is the 70s aesthetic of the movie. And uh, if you can't tell by the shirt I'm wearing, I felt like it was, uh, you know, made sense uh, for this review because uh, the movie kept reminding me of it. And I don't know what that was exactly. Is it the fact that it was about a lot of kids and there's something going on in a small town? And, you know, is it, you know, potentially Joe Hill is paying tribute to his father in some way? Um, again, haven't read the original short story, so I don't know if that is sort of present in that first short story, if it feels like a Stephen King uh, tribute. Um, but uh, I loved it. I truly loved it. Uh, it really felt like this was a movie that not only was, you know, uh, paying homage to the 70s and based in the 70s, but it felt like it was actually filmed in the 70s and in a lot of ways um, felt very authentic. So when I first saw the trailers to this movie, I have to admit, I thought it was PG-13. So imagine my surprise and excitement um, when I'm watching this movie and I'm seeing a lot of blood. There's a lot of blood in this movie, especially early on um, in these really visceral um, fight scenes between kids. Like this movie did not shy away between inter-child <laughs> violence, if that's what it's called. I mean, it felt very real um, and uh, it was very uh, nasty because of that realism. Um, and obviously they're, they're swearing in the movie as well. So that was a bit of a hint to me. Uh, but uh, I was like, oh yeah, I think this movie is actually probably rated R. Cool. So the movie is smart in a lot of ways. Um, one major way that I can think of right off the bat is the fact that it, it spends a lot of time. It spends about 30 minutes, if not more, um, developing the, the characterization of Finney and his sister Gwen and the relationship between the two of them, as well as just Finney's friends in general, one of which is in that fist fight, right? I started to really care about them a lot you know I'm like I really like these kids so when the shit hits the fan and Finney is grabbed by the grabber right I was like no <laughs> you know like I knew it was coming of course like anybody that saw the trailer knew it was coming um just knowing what the movie's about in general you, you probably know it's coming but uh but that was like it really you know, made me feel something because of that. Like I, I, I felt, you know, like nauseous in the pit of my stomach. And that whole moment of him being grabbed is, is really quite sickening, actually, because again, I keep saying this word, but it's so realistic. You can see where something like this could easily happen. You know, like you just let your guard down for a second. And you know, somebody, you know, sort of gets your attention here, you know, it's like the grabber really is a magician because he's using sleight of hand, basically, you know, your attention's over here looking at the broken eggs and he's saying, want to see a magic trick? And then over here, he's getting prepared to actually do something to you. So Finney, you know, takes his eyes off of what's going on for a second to say, are those black balloons in the back there? And, uh, the grabber says something like, they sure are. Um, and that gives him enough time to, you know, actually pull out the balloons, wrap them around him and spray him in the face with something that um, either blinds him or knocks him out or both simultaneously. Um, so that was, you know, something that really, really stuck out to me. Um, just in how, again, visceral and real that felt you know um and you know from that point forward obviously the movie spends a lot of time in the basement uh as well as with the sister Gwen trying to solve uh you know the disappearance of her brother as well using this sort of like you know power almost that she inherited from her mother as it seems the truth 
tree, the door, the gate. I'd never seen it before except in my dream. But that was a little bit confusing to me because it seems like the mother's visions might not have been real, which is why she took her own life. That wasn't explained super well. Maybe I just missed something. Um, but Gwen does seem to have this ability. It, you know, it's not in her control, really, but she does have the ability. And, um, and that actress that plays Gwen, Madeline McGraw, is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. That one moment that she says um, something along the lines of, what the fuck, Jesus? Uh, my entire audience just burst out laughing. Um, but uh, yeah, all the kids are really great in this movie. Um, Mason Thames is phenomenal. I mean, most adult actors can't carry a movie on their own. And he carries it flawlessly. And he's a young kid. You know, so there was a lot of weight on his shoulders and it, it definitely paid off. And I think that we're going to see both of these young actors just blow up. Their careers are going to blow up. I can almost guarantee it. Um, and um, yeah, so there's something that happens in the very first moments of the grabber bringing Finney into the house that kind of gave me pause. And um, I, I should have mentioned before that Finney actually stabs the grabber in the arm with this little rocket ship toy that he carries around with him. Um, so he actually hurt him a little bit as he was abducting him. And when he gets him into the house, but he's still on the upper floor, he says something along the lines of like, like, you got me real good. I ought to break your neck for that. And as soon as they reach the basement and he sets him down, he apologizes for that. And it was almost like two different voices as well. You know, the first being a much deeper, raspier voice and the apologizing being like a much softer kind of voice, right? And I kind of, you know, noticed that and filed it away in my brain. And um, then the movie went on from there. And then obviously the grabber has a mask that has parts that can switch out on it, right? And that moment where you first find out, and I believe it's, it's shortly after one of the first phone calls um, that uh, one of the previous kids, uh, was it the paper boy? I think it was the paper boy. Uh, was beaten to death with a belt by the grabber when he went to go escape, you know, because he leaves the door open. It's like, you know, playing mind games basically with the kids. And um, and you see that he switched out the mouth that was a smiley mouth with a frown, you know. And that got me to start thinking about some things here, you know. Um, I, I have a theory I haven't seen anybody else mention this theory. Um, if somebody has elsewhere, let me know. Mm -hmm. I think that the grabber has different personalities, which are reflected in the different masks that he wears. And when he is upstairs on the ground floor, he is sitting there in the chair, frown on his face, right? Uh, he has a shirt open you know, revealing like a, a beer belly physique and he has the belt on his leg, right? And this kind of mirrors uh, Finney and Gwen's father who, you know, believes in the same type of authoritarian type of punishments, right? Um, and this got me to think like, okay, so when he's upstairs, he has almost like this, this sort of father mentality, right? Um, and then downstairs, he's had more of like a, a feminine kind of quality to him. Ooh, the creepiest damn thing. So I think in his mind, he is sort of, you know, acting out this weird family dynamic, okay? So you have the father with the frown face. You have the mother, let's say, 
with the devil face and the smile. This is the person that, you know, talks in a very, like I said, feminine way, the whole this face, you know, that kind of thing. Um, who also is the one who cooks and brings down the food for Finny, right? I made you some breakfast. What'd you put in that? Salt and pepper. <laughs> and then there's the other one that we saw only briefly. And it was when Finney wakes up after the phone is like, you know, acid tripping on the wall. And um, he is only wearing the bottom of the mask, but revealing his eyes. And that one's much more kid-like, you know, like I just wanted to see you kind of thing, you know? And then there's the fourth and final version of his personalities, which I look at as the killer, which is eyes concealed with the devil mask, but mouth open. So to reiterate, my theory is that the grabber has a family of personalities that he switches through. The father, the mother, the child, which is probably him, you know, they didn't get into his, you know, background or origin story or anything like that, which is fine with me, uh, makes him scarier, actually. Um, but that might be him as a kid. And then the final personality, the killer, right? And I saw that Cody Leach actually pointed out towards the end of the movie, when his mask is pulled off, um, or beaten off, rather, um and his face is revealed and he sort of freaks out and Cody was like well wait a minute his face was revealed before and he didn't care and I think that's because he was in a different personality this is a specific personality he has a specific ritual for when he actually does the killings right and it has to be that way it has to be perfect um, I have a feeling that if that gets messed up you throw a wrench into it at that point then it makes him freak out because it has to be the way that he sees it, right? If he's in a certain personality and you sort of mess that up, then that is going to just, it's going to change everything, right? I, I wonder something else. So I'm going to ask you guys this as well. The moment where he comes into the basement and he asks Finney what his name is, and Finney sort of, you know, is like feeling him out and seeing if he, you know, actually wants to potentially release him. And the grabber is kind of like, you know, hemming and hawing about it. But he's like, yeah, maybe uh, you're different. I trust you. And he, you know, again, asks his name and then Finney lies about his name. And he knows it's a lie because he has the newspaper with his, you know, picture in it and at that point he's like oh i thought you were different you know sort of freaks out and slams the door do you guys think that he was actually going to release him at that point or again is that just more mind games i'm i'm really interested to know um if anybody has a theory about that because honestly i don't know personally i just don't know I've thought about it a little bit and I'm like, well, I, I, I don't know. My gut reaction is to say mind games, but who knows? Who knows? Um, I loved the fact that everything came together at the end. You know, the fact that, you know, the one kid, the baseball player told Finney about digging the hole and the other kid talked about you know, pulling out the window frame, right? And the other one talked about using, you know, the combination on the lock and which unfortunately didn't really work out. And then his friend told him about, you know, walked him through about how to use the phone as a weapon and, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, the other one, the, the scary kid, uh, walked him through uh, basically, 
you know, taking the back of the toilet seat and breaking it through the wall and getting into the freezer, all that kind of stuff. When one of these failed, one after the next, I just thought like, oh, well, you know, that sucks. And I wonder what's going to happen next. I had no idea that the plan was for all of these things to work together simultaneously to actually take the grabber down, right? So he falls into the hole and breaks his leg. And while he his leg is broken, Finney's able to beat him in the head with the phone filled with sand. And then with that last obstacle there, the dog, there is the freezer full of steaks. So he's able to throw that to the dog. And it was just so cool that every little thing was like a puzzle piece that clicked into place and just worked for him to finally get out of there. Um, it honestly it gave me chills when everything started to work. I'm just like, oh, so cool. It's so cool. Um, the only part of that that confused me a little bit was the window because the window didn't come to play into it whatsoever. And they never really went back to it. You know, like there's the whole scene of him pulling out the window. Great. And that was kind of it. He was like starting to jump up to unlatch the window. And then that was it, you know? And it was like, okay. Um, because he could probably, like that one kid said, he could probably pile up, you know, the rugs and stand on them and get up there and unlatch the window. But, you know, whatever. Um, I'm not a screenwriter, so... Who am I to say, right? Um, the last thing I'll, I'll mention before I get into just the couple negatives I have uh, is that there are some really effective jump scares in this movie. I usually don't like jump scares at all. Like, usually I despise them quite a bit. But these were pretty good. And one of them was in the trailer as well. I believe the first trailer. And it still got me. Who are you? And the other one was with the you know, the floating kid as well, who, you know, points. What's the combination? That was, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Um, as for negatives, uh, I don't have a lot. I have really just two of them. And the one is the character of the father, Finney and Gwen's father. I was like thinking, wh what is the point of this character? You know, he's abusive. He's an alcoholic. Is it just supposed to paint the picture that that Finn and Gwen are like tough? You know, they've been toughened over a life of dealing with somebody like this. I, I really don't know. And his character arc was basically that he apologizes at the end, I guess. I don't know. I was... Uh, a little unfulfilled by that one. Um, and the other one's more so like a nitpick. It's the brother, the character of the brother who pops up basically only when it's convenient for the plot. And he gets axed in the head, which was an awesome moment in the theater. You know, the audience reacted to it in a very fun way. But it was like, oh, okay. In a movie where... I didn't expect anything. I expected that one. I was like, oh, okay, well, it's fine, whatever. I'll, I'll give them one, I'll give them one. Um, so, you know, honestly, the only thing there is to talk about now is my rating. And this is a movie that easily could have taken my number one spot if it wasn't for two things that have come out already, unfortunately. Or fortunately, whatever, you know, I guess fortunately, I'd rather have more good movies in my life than bad movies. Um, but if it wasn't for Scream, which I adored, and Top Gun Maverick, which well, I love that freaking movie. Um, if it wasn't for those two, this would be taking my number one spot easily, easily. So, um, so that puts it at number three. And because of that, I would give the movie a nine out of 10, okay? And I just wanna pose a couple questions to you guys in conclusion, right? So first off, what did you think about my theory? 
right? <laughs> I want to know, do you think that it's right? Do you think that that's what they are going for? Or do you think that I'm just completely out of my mind? So again, my previous question of, do you think that the grabber would have actually killed Finney? Um, or let him go actually you know if he was just honest about what his name was this sounds so stupid to say it out loud but you know sometimes just tiny little details like that can make a huge difference and you know would the grabber have actually let him go if he just said what his actual name was or was that just a mind game that had been played by the all the previous kids before him as well and yeah, really, that's it. So if you saw the movie, what did you think of it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did you think that I gushed about this movie too much or not enough or, you know, whatever? Um, comment below. Let me know what is your rating for it. And, uh, you know, give me like a little, you know, review or a big review. You know, whatever. I'll read it. I'll respond. I have nothing else to do with my life uh, except work occasionally right um <laughs> and that's it so if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button i know i've been going on about it for the last few videos and i'm sure it's super annoying and i understand it's not always the easiest thing to remember i mean i watch videos on youtube myself and you know, I like tons of videos that I forget to hit that like button on. I understand it. And that's why we have this, you know, reminder. Unfortunately, the way the YouTube algorithm works, it is the only real consistent way of showing them that you like our channel. If they see a video is liked, they'll go, oh, somebody liked this. Well, now we can move it down the conveyor belt and show it to other people that might like it as well. And uh, nothing else carries the same weight as a like, unfortunately. You can watch our videos for hours, you can comment on our videos, and it just doesn't do it quite the same thing, unfortunately. So if you could do that for me, I would really appreciate it. Um, and, and that's it. So I, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. All right. <laughs> Bye.